Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Today I'm reacting to which yoga will suit you. Karma Kriya Gyana Bhakti Yoga. Sadguru at Yogi 2021. So, I was looking at, uh, I was wondering what Kriya is. So I was like, okay, they got Karma, they got Gyana, they got Bhakti. So they're missing Raja. At least the way I've heard it. So why is it called Kriya Yoga here and not Raja? Everything else is the same. Gyana, or sometimes Gyana is with a G. But bhakti so far has always been the same, and karma has always been the same. So I was looking at the, the this is the uh, uh, thumbnail, by the way. Um, so we look at karma, it looks like he's you know, flexing. Bhakti, um, looks like he's just waving, but it's supposed to be devotion, so it should be prayer, I would assume. Uh, Gyana, looks like he's holding a book for intelligence. And then uh, Kriya Yoga, which is meditation. So you have the... the the poses and then also probably the meditative effect but yeah so why is it called Kriya Yoga uh, and not Raja or which one's the more popular one or why is it called why is there two different names for that but yet Karma, Gyana and Bhakti are uh, seem to be always be the same but anyways while you answer that in the comments below it's going to get started if you want to of course you want to do your own thing 100% you don't want to depend on anybody this is Kriya You want to take a road map and go, Nana. You want to follow somebody else's bus, Karma. You just want to sit in somebody else's bus and go, you don't mind not being the driver, Bhakti. <laughs> okay. What are you ready for right now? You must see that. What I see is before you come to just getting into somebody's bus, you must go through all those things, otherwise you'll sit in the bus and want to drive it. Okay, I'm glad that was the, the intro. The weird intro is where they, they cut somewhere in the middle and just showed it at the very beginning. I gotta hear that again, so I won't rewind it because I know it'll come up. Spiritual alone or seek out a guru? What does it mean to be on a spiritual path with a guru? Now, uh, if you drive by yourself, without a road map. You don't know. What is just next building to get there? You may go round the world and get there. <laughs> or in the process of going around the world, you may just get lost or fall dead. Yes, not everybody has the endurance to complete the journey of that kind, which is of uncertain duration, isn't it? <laughs> or you go with a road map, Somebody has told you, this is it, this is it, this is it. You do, you do just that and go with the road map. Still it's your effort but somebody's guidance. Another way is somebody is going there. You can see that this person is going in the right direction. So you just follow him. Another way. Another way is you don't even trust you following him because one moment you want to go to the bathroom by then he will be gone. So you just get onto his bus. Are you going to pee in the bus? Anyway you go there. No effort from your side. But there are different aspects of you. You want to go yourself because there is a certain aspect of you which want to do things, isn't it? All of you, if I ask you why are you working this hard, you say, what should we live? Don't I need food? Shouldn't I feed my children, my wife? Do one thing. I'll give them a roof and I'll give you food. You don't do anything, you simply sit. Okay? You, your wife, your children, I'll feed them. I'll give them a roof over their head. You don't do anything. Just sit quietly. Possible? You'll go crazy. You'll want to do many things, isn't it? So there is something in you which wants to do things. Till that urge is very strong, then you dri do your own driving. If you're sensible, use the road map. Otherwise get lost for a while here and there, do all kinds of crazy things. When you see you're not getting anywhere, ask for a road map. 
With road map also you can get very confused and lost. Then you drive behind somebody. <laughs> if you are doing well that way, fine. If you are not doing well that way, even there you are getting lost, then you just get onto somebody's bus. Now, even if you sleep, you will go. This means that you have to keep yourself aside. If you have to get onto somebody's bus, you have to keep yourself completely aside. Your personality will not pass. You have to just sit. You don't decide how fast to drive, what to do, how to swing the bus. No, isn't it? So I was thinking if you're the driver, are you... you are karma and jnana. Again, uh, it seems like whenever you're physically, when you're actively doing something, it seems to be like karma and jnana are the things. And whenever you're a participant, when you're in someone else's bus, uh, from what he's explaining, it definitely looks like you're bhakti yoga, perhaps even kriya yoga meditation because, well, I mean, kriya could be any, it could be you, you yourself doing it or uh, following a guru or swami that's uh, helping you in your meditative process. Bhakti is just pure devotion, <clears throat> which you can do on your own, which you can do on your own. But it's more along the lines as you're not necessarily driving the bus either, even though I'm trying to trying to too much uh, thinking of this, but but yes, Bhakti Yoga and Kriya perhaps are the ones where you're the passenger of the bus. Karma and Jnana are the ones perhaps that you're the driver of the bus. For the most part, I guess. <laughs> you just sit. If he stops, you stop with him. If he goes, you go with him. This is one way of journeying. But you want to drive your own vehicle. Then it involves risks, isn't it? It involves various things. So what is it that you're ready for is something that you have to decide. These four ways I am talking about are just bhakti, jnana, karma, kriya. <laughs> do you understand? <clears throat> you want to do your own thing, hundred percent. You don't want to depend on anybody. This is kriya. Okay. You want to take a road map and go, jnana. You want to follow somebody else's bus. Karma. Oh. You just want to sit in somebody else's bus and go, you don't mind okay. not being the driver. Bhakti. What are you ready for right now? You must see that. What I see is before you come to just getting into somebody's bus, you must go through all those things. Otherwise, you'll sit in the bus and want to drive it. Okay, real quick, so karma yoga is where you're following, you're in your own bus but following someone else's bus. Jnana is you are on your own bus and you have a road map. So you're learning on your own uh, by following a set of rules. So basically you're following a book, Upanishads or the Bhagavad Gita or whatever it may be, whatever book that you're following. I mean, it could be even the Bible or the... Um, I can't remember um, the Islam book. Anyways, uh, and bhakti is where you are a passenger, and kriya is where you're doing it completely on your own. Hmm, I would have never thought kriya that way. Meditation. I, at least I think that's meditation. It seems to be, because those are always the four things that I've, I've quite have a better understanding than a lot of other things. <laughs> You'll sit in the back seat and want to drive it, isn't it, most of the time? Back seat driver. That won't be good. <laughs> Before you settle down into the seat, you should exhaust the other aspects, <clears throat> then only you can settle down. So how do you know the bus is going in the right direction? <laughs> That's a big question. <laughs> how do you know this bus is really going there? <clears throat> you really don't know, actually. You, you have no way of knowing also. Hmm. It is just that if you notice that the driver or the bus seem 
to be traveling a different kind of terrain than you know. But you must get onto it and try it. If you look at the driver, you feel very threatened. But still you want to be there. That means you must get onto the bus. Huh, that's weird. If you're very comfortable, you're very pleased with the driver, you like the driver, very pleasant, don't get onto the bus because <laughs> he belongs to your realm. That's why you like him so much. He's just like you. If you… if you sit with someone and for no reason you're uncomfortable, you're threatened, at the same time you still want to be there, that means you have found your guru. Do you understand? <laughs> his ways are normal, but his energy is abnormal. Anything that you don't understand is abnormal, isn't it? That's physics and that's God. <laughs> so, take your time, but when you feel you have done enough, get out of the bus. When you still think you need to do this and that, if you get onto the bus, you'll sit in the back seat and try to drive. That won't work. Oh. Hmm. Let's see if we can't find that one part where he talks about... I hear this. Let's... I want to hear that again. So how this... how according to Sadhguru are these four yogas? you're ready for is something that you have to decide. These four ways I am talking about are just bhakti, jnana, karma, kriya. <laughs> you want to do your own thing, hundred percent. You don't want to depend on anybody. This is kriya. I don't under... <laughs> this is kriya. <laughs> Google. Anyways, I, I don't understand why Kriya Yoga is like that. 100% your own thing, you don't want to depend on anyone. I mean, if if this is Raja Yoga, meditation, you, especially if you're doing um, Kundalini uh, type of meditation, well, I guess Kundalini Yoga is separate from Raja Yoga, so okay, never mind. But it's a, I assume it's a, there are different forms of meditation, but meditation nonetheless. I would assume you'd want someone there to assist you or teach you how to properly meditate. Again, Swami Sarvapriyanand talks about how this one person who wants to meditate before, I think, a 12-hour speech at the UN or something like that, where, you know, he <clears throat> he tries to sit down, he sends his kids away, asks his wife to be quiet so he could meditate. And then he's like, oh, he's hungry, he's tired, and it's hungry, it's itchy, it's too hot, it's too cold, you know. You know, you can't meditate if you don't know the, the proper ways to meditate. So how is this? I, I don't quite understand why Kriya Yoga, if it is in fact meditation, 100% being on your own, I don't, I don't quite understand that. Let's see what's the next one. You want to take a road map and go, Nana. And this make uh, this makes sense to me, uh, Nana, Nana. I keep saying Gyana. I like Gyana. I don't know what's the proper way. Is it Gyana, Nana, or both? <laughs> Anyways, uh, let me know. I, I would prefer to pronounce it properly. Um, so, yeah, Yana, Nana, um, it makes sense. You know, you, you, you are in control of your destiny and how you do things. You just need a manual, roadmap manual, and read and how to do it, and you do it 100% on your own. That makes sense. Let's see what's the next one. You want to follow somebody else's bus. Got it. Follow someone else's bus. Hmm, karma. How is karma following someone else's bus? I figured karma would be the 100% on your own, because in, in karma yoga, there's no te no necessarily technique as far as I can tell. Let me know if I'm wrong in any of these. But in, in karma yoga is just pure thoughts and pure actions. Uh, purely for the benefit of others, um, in a sense being selfish. 
generally speaking, I think it's the benefit of God, devoting your actions and thoughts towards God. Um, that would seem like 100% your own. You don't really need a guru to dedicate yourself to God. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's probably hard, but it's a lot better, no matter what you do, to have a uh, Swami or a guru with you to assist you or teach you how to do things properly. But out of all of them, I figured karma would be the easiest of them to do. Well, I guess bhakti is actually the easiest. But outside of, you know, pure devotion, and I mean, karma and, and, and bhakti are so similar. But anyways, karma, I figured would be, you know, 100% on your own. And then uh, Kriya Yoga would be um, more along the lines of following someone else's bus because you're someone's meditating and then you follow their meditation techniques because there's, I think there's, I'm sure there is many different meditation techniques and it takes a while to get up to a very high level, I don't know how to describe it, but high level meditation to where you can do it on your own. You just want to sit in somebody else's bus and go, you don't mind not being the driver, bhakti. And that makes sense. You know, bhakti is basically, uh, in some sense, uh, the way I think of it, you're not necessarily in control, you know. You just do what you have to do and let things, ha and things will happen the way they happen. So you're not exactly control of everything external. You know, you can only control yourself and you're just following in this bus, in this bus of life, you know, you, as things come, you take it and you do out, do the best you can. And, uh, and that's basically it. You're, you're here for the ride. That makes perfect sense. Bhakti for me, Jnana makes perfect sense, but Karma and Kriya Yoga are the ones that, uh, are just kind of, didn't seem quite right. I mean, again, said Guru trying to, trying to condense, uh, very, uh, large topics into like a few words here. But so far, again, I've I understood some of these things, and bhakti, jnana are ones that makes that makes perfect sense from this description. But karma and kriya, let me know if you if you agree with Sadhguru or you're confused too, like I am. And if you do agree and you understand how what he's saying, let me know because those two things I am confused about. And it makes sense that kriya yoga is 100% on your own. When I think of meditation, as something that is for me, in my opinion, is the most difficult one. Uh, karma yoga being following a bus, I can kind of see that, but I think uh, karma and kriya yoga, the way he descri describes it, needs to be swapped because kriya yoga, yeah, it's the one where you need to follow a guru or swami to teach you the proper ways of meditation. Whereas karma yoga, it can be 100% of your own if you know how to dedicate your actions and your thoughts towards uh, your god or, or your ideals, your I like to believe your ideals of kindness and, you know, well, kindness, I guess. It's about only, kindness and greatness and goodness, I guess. Anyways, let me know in the comments below if whatever you want to let me know and help me out here with this one. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. Thumbs up, thumbs down, down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vid.